Hey, it's me. It's been a while. Today we're going to talk about crossbreeding, or taking any two parents and generating a unique child. So without further delay, here it is. But before I get too far ahead of myself, let's go back. Way back. Summer of 2000. I went to buy Pokemon Silver with birthday money, but in the store I saw an ad for a new game that said something along the lines of Catch and breed monsters to create new ones. And in a last minute decision, I went home with Dragon Warrior monsters instead of Pokemon Silver. I started catching monsters and the first thing I bred was a dragon and a bug. The hybrid child made sense, and wow. as a kid who knew nothing about coding, this first crossbreed seemed like pure magic. My second crossbreed was also pretty cool, but my third crossbreed, another dragon and another bug, led to the oh, same no. child as my first breeding session. At this point, I realized there wasn't an infinite number of monsters to create through breeding and was quite disappointed. I still had a lot of fun with the game, but I didn't view breeding as magic anymore. So that was a long-winded way of saying I've wanted a true crossbreeding game since 2000. So I finally started making one. The first task, and the boring one, was making UI for breeding. I went through a few revisions, but I got something that looks okay. The UI was all done, but I had no breeding code yet. Also, a kind of funny mistake I made. So monster gender is randomly assigned, and I mistakenly did gender equals random two, which meant I was getting three genders instead of two, and the third gender was grabbing whatever random image was next in my icon tile set, which just so happened to be cheese. So I had males, females, and Swiss cheese. Easily fixed, but it made me chuckle. Now to the breeding code. If you remember from an earlier video, my monsters can already grow or smoothly shift from one form to the next. Turning the growing code into breeding code was actually pretty straightforward, since I'm basically just averaging two monsters. But using just averaging had some pretty weird hiccups that I had to fix. So each of my monsters are divided into segments, as represented by colors here. So notice that the dog's eyes would be on segment 2. And take a look at this anteater and notice that his eyes are on segment 3. If the child is an average of these two animals, that means there is a 50% chance there will be an eye on segment 2 and a 50% chance there will be an eye on segment 3. Because I wasn't sharing information between segments, this led to children sometimes having two eyes, four eyes, or sometimes having no eyes at all. A similar problem I was having was with legs. Hypothetically, if you could breed an eight-legged spider with a four-legged dog, how many legs would the child have? In my mind, it would make sense for most of the offspring to have six legs, and maybe a few to have four or eight legs. What doesn't make sense is that a dog-spider hybrid should have 12 legs, which is what I was getting. The reason for this is because I was averaging the length of the legs and ignoring the number. So I was getting the sum total of the legs, and my code was just averaging the sizes. To prevent extra eyes or legs popping up between generations, I just clamped the number of legs and eyes to be within the range of the parents. I had to do this for legs, eyes, arms, ears, and basically any body part that shouldn't increase in number between parent and child. Another weird issue was with breeding two monsters with significantly different body sizes. So if I had a long monster, like a weasel, and bred it with a short monster, like a hamster, the second half of the weasel wouldn't have anything to mix with since the hamster's body didn't go that far. My breeding algorithm would then go, uh, and just stick whatever was left over of the weasel's body onto the back of the hamster. I fixed this by stretching or shrinking the two monsters' lengths to be the same size before breeding them. After fixing these couple things, for the most part, breeding was now working. So the final touch was mutations. Even if the same two parents were bred several times, I wanted each child to be at least slightly different. So the first thing I did was randomly select one parent to be slightly more dominant than the other. The second thing I did was make any body dimensions or color ever so slightly randomized. And that was pretty much it for mutations. Here are four children that all had the same parents. A pretty good variation between them. There are still some special cases to work out, and I'll probably be squashing breeding bugs all the way up until release, but for now I think it turned out pretty good. And finally, I am finally changing the working title from Beast Socket. I wanted something that sounded 90s, campy, nostalgic, and Super Nintendo-ish, and after a lot of revisions, I came up with Crossbreeder X. There were a lot of similar variants, but unless everyone says the name is terrible, I'll stick with Crossbreeder X for now at least. So I guess that's it. Bye.